Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. It's time to get going on these shelf pins. And you know what, there's so many different ways and so many different jigs out there. I thought I would spend a couple of minutes going over a couple that I have available to me um, and just showing you what some of the options are. What you do is, is completely up to you. Um, but I am gonna kind of show you what I have, what I'm gonna do, and why I made the decisions that I made. Okay, so one of the most expensive options is, is the Festool system, um, the LR32, I believe it's called. Um, and I have a rail. I don't have the LS32 system. Quite frankly, I just can't justify the cost. I don't do enough with shelf pins to warrant this being a real viable option in my shop. If I were doing a lot of case and cabinet work, then this would certainly be a time saver and I would probably invest in this system. Um, I also have the woodpecker shelf pin system, which I, I referred to in the last video. And we're gonna use this one now that I have the collet for the router. Um, but there's other options out there as well. For instance, this is a homemade jig, and we'll actually use this on the, probably on the side cases, just because it has such a tall span. Um, and it's just a matter of of centering up the holes and I, I'll show you me making that jig uh, in my drill press and it, it's just a nice viable option it really cost me nothing this was just leftover scrap from another project and I threw the jig together real quick so that and a drill I'll probably use a piece of blue tape on it as a stop but they make a stop collar for the drill which would just screw right on there and you would have you be in business for I know, probably less than $10. So let me get the shop set up and we'll use the woodpecker jig here first. We're gonna do the big middle case um, because I only need a couple of pins in there and I'll show you how this one works. Okay, I've set my router up a quarter inch bit. There's a 3 8 collet that fits in these holes. But I only want a few pins on here. So I've marked where my start and stop locations are. There's a little piece of uh, white pencil marking on there. It's hard to see, I know. Um, I don't need a lot of holes in here. I've also set my setback to be an inch and a half back, which on this template, it's, it's easy to find. Um, there's marks right in here for it. Um, and then the, the other one that I made, I also set that up for an inch and a half setback so I can be consistent among the cases, but still show you a couple of different ways to do the same job. So we're just going to route these out. Then I'm gonna flip the template over to this side and set it up the same way. And we'll do, uh, we'll do all the center case this way. Okay, so in this method, all I did was add a piece of blue tape to a drill bit so I don't drill too deep. And marked where I wanted my start, my stop. I have more holes in this than I need for this. I've lined it up with the slot on here so that I have a good reference point. And all I'm gonna do is just drill these holes. And just like that, one side is done. Got to do the other side of this cabinet, and then I have the two sides for the other cabinet. Um, so I'll spend the next little bit uh, in the shop getting that stuff done. Then I think we're going to go after some glue-ups. So I just wanted to take a second to point out, if you buy one of these aftermarket uh, bushing kits or base plates or you know whatever it is, if you're going to change that base plate out on your router, make sure you buy one of these centering pens. Um, some kits come with them, some don't, but it ensures that that collet is perfectly center with, with your router. So it just uh, improves your precision a little bit. Okay, one last dry fit to confirm all the measurements before committing this to glue. Um, something I should note is the fixed shelves in here, this is one of the smaller cabinets obviously, I'm going to go ahead and put screws in that side is against a wall, and this side, of course, is against the big center cabinet. So you're never going to see those screws, and I think I just get a little bit more rigidity and reinforcement out of it. 
by going ahead and adding those screws. So I'm not going to film this glue up. It's going to be long and involved. Um, but I will come back and show you, show me putting those screws in, although, you, you know, there's not a lot there to see. But I, I am going to put the screws in it um, just for more support. So, yeah, we're going to go to glue up. Okay, so there's the big case glue up. I'm happy with it. Everything is, is just nice and square. So it's, uh, it's definitely a good thing that I have a fairly healthy clamp collection. But uh, all in all, I'm pretty happy with this glue up. So I'm gonna let this sit for a while and then get some screws in it and uh, glue up the last little one. And maybe tomorrow when I come out, we can get started on some drawers. Okay, well there it is, all out of clamps. I've got the, the tops clamped together. My shop floor is just not that flat. So, um, but I'm happy with the way it turned out. It's all square. Dimensionally, it's, it's what I need. Um, so, yeah, next up is going to be drawers. So I'm going to take some time to get the shop cleaned up this morning. And then we're going to go ahead and start getting after drawers. Okay, so I just got back from my local hardwood dealer and I have all the material in the truck for the drawers, but I needed to really make some room in here. Frankly, I can't get to my bench. It's, it's just not, it's not working for me. So I'm going to go ahead and rough break down the back material so that I can get that set aside and get it out of the way. It's all just rough sizes, but I'm going to do that before we get going on the drawers. Okay, drawer parts are all going to be uh, Baltic birch plywood and no fancy joinery or anything. This is going to go in a closet. So all I'm going to do is just start ripping this down to rough sizes and then we'll start building drawers. And I'm also going to edge band the tops just so it does look a little bit nicer. Um, but yeah, we're just going to start breaking down the plywood. All right, there's all the uh, drawer parts. They're just roughed out. Um, they still all have to be cut to, to final lengths. Uh, they're correct for heights though. So next up, we need to get to the drawer glides, but before we can do those, I need to go ahead and mill drawer fronts so that I can set the glides in exactly the right place, or at least get me close enough where the adjustments in the glides can, uh, can make up for it. So next up will be figuring out drawer fronts. All right, so here's the material I picked up for the drawer fronts. Um, these bottom five boards, they all came from the lumber yard at the same time. Color-wise and grain-wise, they're very, very similar. So I'm happy with that. And of course, the elephant in the room is this big knot down here. So, and I had some leftover cherry from a previous project as well. So. Initially, I thought I wouldn't use this board. I just grabbed some of that other cherry and, and we'd go. The problem with the other cherry is color wise, man, I mean, it's, it's not even close. Um, as well, the grain patterns are significantly different in those two boards up top there. So I called my design expert, i.e., the wife, and asked her what she wanted. And she wanted the knot. Um, it's not a real surprise to me, but she wanted the knot. So I don't know that I've done too much for knot fills and stuff before in video. So, okay, we'll put it, we'll put the knot in. Um, this all goes in a closet, so it's not the end of the earth, but I'm going to go ahead and work on this knot before I get going on milling all this stuff to final sizes. So let me get this cleaned up and I'll show you what I'm doing for the knot.
Okay, so I'm not going to completely fill this to start with because I don't want it to blow my tape out on the back and run all over my bench. So I'm just going to put a bit of a fill coat in there to start with. Let it run in as it sees fit. I can't get my torch working right now, so I'm just going to use this barbecue lighter just to blast off those bubbles a little bit. And I'll come in every 15, 20 minutes or so and do that until it hardens up. Once it's hard, I'll go ahead and top it off. Okay, it's been several hours. I got a fairly good cure on that now. So I'm just going to go ahead and top it off. I'll leave it probably just a smidge low since we have to mill anyway. I can always come back and add a little bit more if need be. And just like before, gotta get rid of the bubbles. We'll come out every little while and keep those bubbles out and then we'll uh, start milling us some drawer fronts, probably in the morning. Okay guys, well I noticed this video is running a little bit long. This still needs to cure. So tonight or tomorrow morning when I get up, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and mill this stuff. You guys don't need to see that. You've seen that before. So I'll get this milled and get it ready to go. And, and get the drawer parts cut to final sizes, and then we'll get going on building those drawers. So until next time, guys, take care. <laughs>